Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so I was uh, sorting through some materials, uh, getting ready to make some various presentations uh, that I want to show you guys, and I came across uh, a memory stick, and on it I had uh, a presentation that was given to me uh, in the Russian form by Andrei Chistolinov, and uh, uh, I don't know whether I have... There's two presentations, actually. Um, I think I have a video recording of one of them, which I'm going to combine with the translated presentation, which I've nearly done for both of them. Um, and I'll put that out there. But uh, it's very interesting because this guy, um, <laughs> after I gave my presentation, uh, I, I recall sitting down uh, for an evening with uh, Alexander Shishkin, and we were talking about various things. And, and uh, Andrei Chistolinov, for like, he kept going into my ear. He says, who are you? Why do you know these things? And so forth. And I, I didn't really know what he was going on about. But um, having uh, looked through uh, this presentation, which I didn't really understand at the time, because it was, it was given in Russian and the, the slides were in Russian, um, so it was difficult for me to follow. But uh, having gone through and, and done the translation, or nearly done the translation, I can realize why he found uh, what I was able to show in my presentation uh, very interesting. Um, anyway, so I, I just want to go a, a brief overview of these two presentations. Uh, so this particular presentation, like I'm just going to skip to a few slides, uh, and then uh, later on I will show the whole presentation um, uh, in w w with the Russian as was given um, uh, as a, a package, and then uh, maybe I will go over it more detail after that is released. Anyway, so um, this is on the problem of spinning ball lightning, and he says in the report outline that they'll say what is ball lightning, why the problem of ball lightning rotation is so important. What is coherent matter? Coherent matter is quantum degenerate medium, uh, the solution to the problem of rotation of ball lightning and its consequences. Anyway, so uh, this is a famous uh, ball lightning sequence that was caught by many people from various angles. Uh, uh, and so it's kind of like unlikely to have been an uh, you know a fake one uh, and this video is available the videos for this are available on the internet and uh, he goes through and describes the various uh, um, observations of ball lightning over history with uh, citing references uh, anyway um so uh, he's saying uh, the properties of the matter of ball lightning, such matter should have the following properties. It should have a density much less than that of the density of the air under normal conditions. At temperatures characteristic of ball lightning, it must be in a liquid state of aggregation. That is, in particular, to maintain its volume, have free surface and uh, surface tension. And it should uh, interact so weakly with atomic matter as to be able to move through it at speeds characteristic of ball lightning. Such matter is called coherent matter. That should be CM uh, in the English version tied matter like I say these might be bad translations I'm going to try and improve the translation before I attach it to the video anyway he, he um, uh, goes in now I, I, I'd already deduced that there must be some coherency in whatever is producing Lena uh, if it is related to ball lightning which it seems to be and um, uh, you know for that to be coherent uh, it's most likely to be in a bosonic state and so forth. And I, I gave things along those lines in my uh, Sochi presentation, so maybe he would have been interested in what I had to say there. Um, and uh, uh, But it, it, he's giving all these equations here, which you, you can look at, which are very interesting. But there's a couple of things that I wanted to draw out uh, in this preview video, and, and that is uh, this particular diagram where he's moved on from saying it's unlikely to be just individual uh, vortex filaments and actually be like a folded vortex filament in the fact of a vortex ring, and that this is the direction of travel. And uh, it says vortex rings of small diameter incoherent matter of ball lightning may look to the observer as moving luminous points in the volume of the ball lightning. And the interesting thing here is... Um, this soliton ring he has uh, is obviously something that we've observed uh, in uh, various uh, things that I've shown you over the last couple of years. And also, he, he is calculating that the direction travel should be here. Now, um, you know, when I was thinking about this, when I started to see all these different experiment uh, uh, data in early 
uh, uh, 2000, in 2017 and, and 2018, I considered that the, the structures would be moving in this direction. Uh, and the reason is because is I thought, well, they're, they're eating the material in here. Uh, and so that they would be pulling and ejecting from here. But actually, um, uh, uh, what uh, sold me on the idea that they were that actually moving in the opposite direction was the uh, video that I took in 2017 in Suhas Railcar's Rail lab um, in India. And I've got that here. And uh, you can see it's a hydrodynamic phenomena. If you imagine that this is a fluid, uh, a superfluid or whatever, uh, that you have these uh, uh, toruses, and if I step through this, you'll you'll see how these go. But essentially, they they rotate around this way, and this is exactly in tune with what he postulates here. Um, I, I've actually seen it. So for, for a very long period of time, I've considered that they have to go in this direction. And if you think about it, it's a bit like an aerofoil. You've got more distance being shifted here than in the center. Um, and anyway, so but you can you can see it here. So if I go through this, another thing, a couple of things that you can see is that as um, if you imagine that these are analogs for Shoulders exotic vacuum objects, Shoulders was able to break an exotic vacuum object and then rejoin them. Uh, and so they, they, if you can imagine that that you have one EVO of one scale, it can actually absorb other EVOs and when you actually look at it, it doesn't almost look like it's changing scale. So it looks like there's even quantizations within this hydrodynamic dynamic setup. But here we can see a ring and it dissipates. But up here you can see a things coming together and they come together and then they become more like a ring. And you can see it's, not, it's sucking another one into it. And there it goes and it comes down here. And w watch this one here. You can see as it gets going that it's rotating round this way on the ring but it's traveling in this direction. So let's have a look at that. You can see it's rotating around here, but it's traveling in this direction. So if the the material that's in a ball lightning and that's in Lena is acting in a similar way, um, the, the soliton as, you know, simplified is much more simple than this, but you, you could, this gives you the idea of how a soliton would travel through uh, a fluid and it, again you can see how things join together so you've got one here one here one here one here and they kind of join together and they all form this particular ring which then gets annihilated and so on so i would this video is called sprites on our youtube channel because youtube uh compresses it a little bit more i gave a link to the raw footage so you can step through this and understand a little bit more about what uh, hydrodynamics are that's going on uh, so that's that, uh, and then he uh, the conclusion in this particular presentation is equations for quantum quantum degenerate coherent matter are written under the assumption that it is a Bose fluid, and I would suggest that it is a Bose fluid. This uh, comports with my thinking. Uh, equations are written for the superfluid component, the coherent matter in the incompressibility approximation in the case of uniform rectilinear motion of the normal component. <clears throat> It is shown how structural elements in the form of threads and moving points that can rotate around the axis of symmetry are uh, of the ball lightning can arise in uh, the considered uh, model. And the effective particle mass of coherent matter and the core diameter of the vortex filaments of coherent matter are estimated. So there's some really good stuff in here to look at and delve into for those of you that are interested in mass. But for me, the fact that it is coherent matter, the fact that it's... Uh, uh, Bose material, superfluid, degenerate, and uh, it has this direction of travel that we witnessed when uh, studying another hydrodynamic source in 2017 in the Suhas Ralkos lab is the most interesting components to this. Then the other thing is, uh, he had this other presentation, and for me, this is talking about strange radiation, uh, the emission of matter from the surface of ball lightning and the problem of strange radiation, properties of strange radiation, high energy objects and coherent matter, radiation of high-energy objects from the surface of coherent matter, high-energy objects on the surface of coherent matter, and vibrational modes of half-vortex rings in coherent matter and their comparison with traces of strange radiation. So, um, you know, having translated, this is actually a really interesting presentation. So, um, but uh, I, I will, I'll go through. It gives, it gives a couple of examples that you may have seen from various authors in various different materials and various different experiments. Uh, and then uh, he goes on to... Uh, 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 talk about this again, the, the same structure I just showed and the direction of travel. Uh, 
Uh, this, for me, is one of the most interesting slides, and maybe why he was so interested in my presentation. He's saying, like, basically, we've got some coherent matter here, and then we've got a, a boundary, for instance, with solid air, uh, and it goes through the boundary, and the the uh, vortex ring, uh, when it goes through the, the boundary of the coherent matter, it comes out, it produces a, a droplet. Now, could this be uh, uh, what explains the spheres that we see in so many Lenner experiments, these, the production of material, which seems to be, or can be, uh, of a different element? Is it basically coming out of a co coherent piece of matter uh, where, you know, it's lost its identity and as it comes out, these high energy structures, uh, they then come into uh, normal matter and, and basically immediately produce a sphere. I don't know, but my reading of this comports with my observation uh, over a number of years in various experiments. So I just thought that was very interesting to share with you. Uh, and then he goes on uh, to talk about half solitons uh, with your counter-rotating vortices, things that we saw in the Lion Reactor and other experiments. And uh, then he talks about the vibrational modes and the envelopes on the vibrational modes and the alt alternate vibration modes and how you can have these mixed envelopes and how this would explain extreme strange radiation tracks uh, like this one and how, you know, it may be a uh, catalyst for Lena reactions. And he proposes an experiment there. So he says, based on the data of five experimental groups, Aritzkrev, Adamenko, Savamatimova, Solin, uh, and uh, Svotsova, the properties of strange radiation which leave tracks like a tractor track are formulated. He only deals with the, those ones that leave a, a tractor track. Uh, a physical model explaining the properties of this kind of uh, strange radiation has been proposed. An experiment has been uh, proposed to test the model. So um, I will share these presentations. Uh, but I just wanted to give you the heads up now uh, because of uh, the, the those two points. Essentially, um, that uh, we have this uh, potential mechanism for something to come out of a coherent matter body as in the form of strange radiation and deposit a blob of co uh, co coherent matter uh, as a sphere. And maybe that this then uh, decays into some actual physical matter. Um, I'd like some people's opinions on uh, whether that's uh, something that's being suggested there. And then it's about this direction of travel of these uh, soliton rings and uh, the supporting evidence, as I have uh, uh, shown you in uh, this uh, rather lengthy and interesting video that we have here. So thank you very much uh, for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.